As we continue our study of statistics, we're now going to look at the measures of central tendency and position. The measures of central tendency are better known as averages. So though this phrase measures of central tendency may be new to you, I'm going to guess that average probably is not a new topic for you. So when we talk about measures of central tendency, we're simply talking about averages. There are four different averages. There's a mean average, a median average, the mode average, and a mid-range average. And most likely, you're familiar with the mean average more than any of the others. And of the four, the mid-range average is likely the one that you have the least amount of practice calculating in the past. So let's look at all four of these and we'll start with the mean average. Although you may know how to calculate a mean, you want to also ensure that you understand this symbol. We read the symbol simply X bar. We've got an X with a bar above it. So we call this X bar. And X bar represents the mean of a sample of a population. Although when we calculate mean in our textbook and in our My Math Lab examples, we're going to be calculating the X bar, it is useful and worth noting that this Greek symbol, it's just a Greek letter mu, the Greek symbol or the Greek letter mu is going to represent the mean of the entire population. When we are asked to calculate a mean, it's going to be implied that that means the X bar, but make sure you're familiar with this mu, which is the mean of the entire population. Let's talk a little bit more about the X bar. There is a formula for X bar, although you can probably describe in your own words how to find X bar or in other words, how to find the mean average. Let's talk through some of the formal terminology and the formal symbols. We first have this additional Greek symbol, the capital sigma. And what's fun about the Greek alphabet and many of our math symbols that come from Greek letters is that it is a phonetic language. So if you are reading something that's written in Greek, when you come across this symbol, its phonetical pronunciation is the same as our letter S. So sigma is another way of saying summation. <laughs> and we write it in this capital Greek letter form. When you see sigma X, what that means is sum of all the X's, or in other words, add up sum, add up, add up all of the x's. So a formula we could write for the mean average or x bar is simply the summation of all the x's divided by n, where n is how many pieces of data there are, how many x's there are, or in other words, how many numbers have we added up? So you divide up by, divide up the sum of all the X's by how many X's there are. The other averages are median, mode, and mid-range. So we have the mean average, and then the median average is the number that appears in the middle. If we listed all the numbers from low to high or high to low and find the number that's immediately directly in the middle, then that number, that X, is, is called the median average. It's easy to find the median if there's an odd number of pieces. So for example, if we had one, seven, eight. There's three pieces, 
So the number that's in the middle when I've put these in order from low to high is clearly the seven. So the median is the one in the middle. If there's an even number, so let's add to this uh, 12. If there's an even number, then you, you notice that the middle is somewhere between the seven and eight. Well, now we simply find the midpoint between seven and eight. What would lie between the seven and the eight? Well, that's a seven and a half because halfway from seven to eight is seven and a half. Or in other words, seven plus eight divided by two is 15 divided by two or seven and a half, 7.5. So the median is a number in the middle. If there's not an odd number of numbers, then we take the two numbers that are in the middle and find their midpoint. The mode is the number that appears the most often. So in this case, with the 17812, there's no number, no x, that appeared more often than the others. If I add another 12 at the end, now I could say that the mode is 12 because there's more 12s than there are anything else. You could also have a tie for first place. So if I added another one to the set of data, now we'd see there's two modes, one and 12. So mode is the only average that there could be more than one answer. There is more than one mode. There's only one mean, only one median, and only one mid-range, but there could be more than one mode. And there could also be no mode at all. The mid-range is the halfway point from the lowest number to the highest number. Don't confuse that with the median. It's not the same as the median. What we're going to do is say that the in this case with the 1, 1, 7, 8, 12, and 12, even if I dropped that extra 1 and that extra 12, we're looking for the midpoint between the 1 and the 12. What's halfway, what's the halfway mark from the 1 to the 12? Don't call it a 6. The halfway point from the 0 to 12 would be 6. But the halfway point from 1 to 12 is actually, actually going to be 6 and a half. Let me show you this. If, if we added the 1 to the 12 and got 13 and cut 13 in half, we would get 6.5, 6 and a half. You could also prove this to yourself on a number line. Let me make room here for a number line. And if I put the 1 up through 12 on a number line, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, then we could see that if we started on both ends and went, let's say, uh, an equal number of spaces, so I've gone three. Keep going, so we're going to try and meet in the middle. You see that the middle is going to lie here in between the 6 and the 7. So if I wanted to meet in the middle between 1 and 12, it's going to be 6 and a half or 6.5. You could convince yourself of that. If you're confused at all on mid-range, convince yourself of the mid-range by following the same process I've just followed, where you draw this number line. Let me go back and show you that one more time. Draw this number line and just count uh, from both ends and uh, meet in the middle. So we could say, okay, here's one, two, three, four places from the one, one, two, three, four places from the 12. We're still not in the middle. Keep going one more, still not in the middle. So the middle is going to be the halfway between these two, and these two are 6 and 7. And the halfway point between the 6 and the 7 is a 6.5. That is the mid-range. Let's look at an example where we can find the mean, median, mode, and mid-range. And I'm going to start uh, just by getting a better understanding 
of this data by marking these numbers here on a, a number line. And the numbers that appear more than once, I'll, I'll put X's. So we've got a one, two twos, two threes, a four, and we've got three nines and a 10. If we're looking for the central tendency, we're looking for how does this data fall? What would be in the middle? And you could see that if we put five numbers on the left, five numbers on the right, we'd fall right here at 3.5. That's what would happen if I put five numbers, five of the data points, five of the X's to the left and five of them to the right, we'd get a 3.5. Notice that there's this big gap between them. So that's going to give us some interesting uh, information when we go to look for central tendency. Because for the average, are we looking for, if this were a teeter-totter, where would it be heavier? It looks like these 9s and 10s are a lot heavier than these, uh, than just like the 1 and the 2. There's 1 and 2, there's only 3 of those. For the 9s and 10s, they're heavier in the high numbers. Uh, do we want the number for the average? Do you want the number that's the most popular? Well, that's clearly a nine. So as we look at the data, before we calculate the mean, median, mode, and mid-range, we could just process through what we're seeing in the data. Let's go ahead and calculate each of these. If we wanted the mean average, we'd want to sum up all the X's and divide that by how many X's there are. So we'd sum up all the X's, 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 9 plus 9 plus 10, and that would add up to a 52. And then there are 10 pieces of data, so if we divided that 52 by 10, we'd get 5.2. So it looks like our mean average is going to fall right here. Let me put that in. Uh, let me put the mean on our number line. 5.2 is our X bar or our mean average. The median is going to be the one that's in the middle. We already found that when we said that five of the data points are to the left, five are to the right, so that was our medium. If we didn't write them on a number line, we could just count that there's 10 of them. So one, two, three, four, five to the left and five to the right. The middle point, the median is in the middle, just like when you're driving down the road, the median is in the middle. So the middle is going to be that 3 and 4. So our median has to be halfway between 3 and 4 or 3.5. The mode, again, as we said earlier, the mode is the one that appears the most often. That's 9 because it appears 3 times. More often than a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 10. More often than anything else. Now, I want to point out that you could have more than one mode. So if there had been three twos, let me add another two here. If we had three twos, we could say that this set of data had two modes because both the two and the nine would have been the mode. So a mode, we could have more than one. Finally, the mid-range. What is the half way mark between 1 and 10. So if I added 1 to 10 and found halfway between them. Now if I uh, rewrite this number line so it's not a line but a line segment, call it a number line segment. So we're clearly ending at 1 and 10. Because I, I'm doing this because a lot of students will mistake the mid-range for 5. So we'll isn't half of 10, 5? And yes, you're right, half of 10 is 5. But the mid-range is not half of the biggest number. We're not starting at 0 
So we're finding the midway point from the 1 to the 10. And midway from the 1 to the 10, if you see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's like midway is going to be in between that 5 and 6. So five and a half would be the mid-range. Again, make sure you're doing the halfway point between one and 10, not zero to 10, because one plus 10 divided by two, so the halfway point is half of 11 or 5.5. That's an example finding these different values for the measures of central tendency, the different averages. The mean average is 5.2. The median average, the number in the middle is 3.5. The mode average, the one that appears the most often is nine. And the mid range between the high and the low, the mid range average is five and a half. Let's look now at an example of finding a mean average. The mean average of 90 or greater is needed to get an A. If there's six exams and you want to find what score you need on that last exam, then we could use the formula for the mean average. Now this problem may look familiar because we did do this problem earlier in the course when we looked at problem solving. And this problem could be done e even without knowing the other uh, averages, we could have done this problem by simply using a formula or using a process. A uh, good way that you could have done this problem before was saying, well, 90% times six exams is 540. So we would know that the total of these five exams plus our missing exam had to add up to 540. Uh, in other ways that we've done this problem before, but at this point we want to do this problem using our formula for the mean average. So let's apply Polya's four problem solving steps. The first step is to understand the problem. Make sure you understand what it is you're looking for. We're looking for the grade needed on the six exam to get an A in the course. So we could let X represent the score on the sixth exam. And I'm gonna start by stating that. And then we could write the formula that the average 92 plus 90 plus 87 plus 93 plus 96 plus x, so that's the summation of all the x's divided by the number of x's, so divided by six tests, must be, notice that it's greater or equal, because it says uh, that we need um, a mean average of 90 or greater. 90 or greater, equal to 90 or greater. So when we see 90 or greater, we're thinking greater or equal to. Solving this inequality, we would add up the scores 92, 90, 87, 93, 96, and that gives us 458. And when we take that 458 plus X, that's got to be greater or equal to 90 times 6. Because I'm going to, to solve this inequality, multiply both sides by 6. Sorry, I've run out of space here, so I'm going to fit it in here. So that would give us 458 plus x is greater than or equal to 540. And then subtract 458 from both sides. And when I subtract... 458 from both sides, I'd get that x is greater or equal to 82. I want to finish this problem by looking back and thinking, okay, is that seem possible that with these scores, a lower score, since most many of these scores, the 93, the 96, the 92 are all above the cutoff for an A, and the 90 is just lying there right on the line, there's only one score below the A. So what Sandy has done is created some margin of error 
in her grading so that this six score could be lower than an A. So 82 does seem like it's a very likely a possible uh, right answer. So we have looked back and that answer makes sense. Therefore, Sandy needs at least 82% on, on exam six. Sandy needs at least 82% on exam six. Don't forget to finalize your problem by stating the answer. Let's move on to measures of position. Measures of position are percentile and quartile. I'm gonna stop the video here and encourage you to watch video number two for more information about these measures of position.